Hi again, uh, here we are to talk about JavaScript and I'm going to continue the example with the timer. Um, and so, so far, you know, we've got our timer running here. Let me refresh it, right? You, if we click the start button, the timer starts running, um, but we can't stop it, right? Um, as a matter of fact, actually, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like every time I click this, it actually adds another interval and you can see my timer starts running like crazy, right? So that's kind of a problem. Let's fix that, right? Okay. So you guys may have noticed that when you were trying to solve the challenge there. Um, good for you if you if you fix that one, right? So what's our problem? Well, you know, every time we click this button, we will be creating a new interval. Okay, so essentially, if we click the button again, we don't want to create a new interval every time. What we want to do is we want to stop the old interval and then start a new one, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, hey, clear interval right and then after we've cleared the old interval we can run the new interval okay let's give it a try so now if I click the test button 1001 1002 it runs if I click it again like a whole bunch of times it doesn't run any faster right because I just started the timer over again you know every time right but we still need to stop it right so how do we stop it so let's imagine that if the timer is running, we want to stop the, the, the timer. And if it's not running, we want to start it, okay? So that means here, you know, we, we need a little pseudocode, right? So what we want to do is we want to say like, hey, you know, um, if timer is running, you know, um, running then you know uh, stop or pause maybe right let's say pause right else you know uh, start okay so if the timer is running we want to pause it if it's not running we want to stop it okay or you know we could switch that around maybe we want to say like hey you know if paused start the timer else pause the timer maybe that's even better right but anyway, there's some pseudocode, right? So it's super simple, right? So how do we know? Well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this in bad code here because it's kind of the way JavaScript works. Um, you know, we could write a lot better code, but we'll just keep it simple as possible, right? Let's use my interval to keep track of whether the interval is running or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a value of, uh, of zero. Now let's give it a value of negative one. How about that, right? Okay, so whenever my interval is negative one, the timer is paused, okay? So we'll say, hey, you know, if paused, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, hey, if uh, my interval equals negative one, then I know that the, the timer is paused. In that case, I'm going to you know, do this code here, maybe, right? Okay, so we'll start our, our timer, right? So if, if it's negative one, that means our, it's paused. So we'll create a new interval. And notice here, we're setting my interval to some value, whatever set interval returns, which is not going to be negative one. It's going to be any other value. It'll end up being some other value. It's, I think this really just returns an, in, an integer value. It could be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, but it won't be negative one. Okay, and there we go, right? Um, so now we need to do something here, right? So um, else we can say um, clear the interval, right? And so that should stop our interval. And then what we'll do is we'll say my interval equals negative one again, because that's, you know, this is the, the kind of the, the clue that we're using up here to know that the timer is paused. Okay, so let, something like that might work and you could probably rearrange this code a little better, but that's kind of, you know, the basic idea there. Let's save it and give it a test. So there's my timer, it's running. I'll click stop there. It's not running anymore. We'll click again. And then it starts running again. Okay, so uh, so there's a basic, you know, timer thing. You know what? Our timer doesn't work that great because, you know, it just says test here. Why don't we make that say, 
you know, um, start and stop or run and pause or something, right? So let's, let's change that, right? So our button here, instead of saying test, we can say start. Oops, right? So we'll say start, right? And when the timer is running, we'll be inside this block. So what I'm going to do here, not inside the interval block, maybe I'll put it up above the interval, right? So right before we set the interval, what we'll do is we'll say button dot inner HTML equals pause, okay? And then down here, when we're in this else block, we'll say button dot inner HTML equals start. Okay, so that will, you know, this will change the text. Remember, inner HTML is this, right? You know, the element inside the tag or the text inside the tag. So, you know, when we start the timer running, we'll make the button say pause because that means the next time you click it, it's going to actually pause the, the timer. And then if the timer is paused, like if we pause the timer, we'll change the text in the button to start because that means the next time you click it, the timer should start running again, right? So we'll save that. We'll refresh it here, and you can see it says start now. That's pretty good. And if I click start, the timer starts running, and now the button says pause. And then if I click again, it says start, and the timer is stopped. Okay? So anyway, so that gets you started on just kind of a simple thing. And, you know, this doesn't look like much. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to challenge you to do something else. I've created another timer here, and my timer looks like this. And it's got two buttons. One of them is the start and the pause button, just like we saw in the last example, okay? And, you know, it starts and pauses the timer. And my timer, um, it'll count to 60, and then it'll count up one minute here, okay? And if you reset, it stops the timer and sets it back to zero again. So the reset button is a little different than the pause button, okay? Right, so the, the pause button just, you know, pauses the timer right there, and then if I start, it'll just continue from five, six seconds, right? And if I reset it, it'll stop it and set it back to zero, okay? And then it also counts to 60 and then counts up one minute, okay? And then you can see here also I've styled my timer. So the look of my timer, these are actually just two button tags, just like the last example. And this, I don't know, it's like a paragraph or an H1 or something. It's, it's not even anything special. Maybe it's just a div, right? Um, but what I've done is I've styled it. So I set the colors for these things. Um, I set, these are actually just buttons, but they just have a style. So I set the border, I set the border radius, I set the background color. Um, you know, I set the font style, right, on everything. So I'm going to challenge you now to um, add the reset button, style your timer so it looks really nice, okay? Use your style sheet um, to, to make it look good, okay? Um, so anyway, good luck with that challenge, and thanks for watching.